So this is the HP Pavilion 15 that I have been using for testing the Ryzen 5 5500U for well over a year now. I've been finding that recently with some games, 1% lows have been the main culprit and problem. And what I've found is that people tend to recommend a debloated version of Windows. Luckily, I recently read an article about one called Tiny11, which if you saw my video about the HP Elite Desk G3, I actually ended up installing on there, but now I wanna install it on a system that is actually powerful enough to utilize this de-bloated version that is extremely thinned down. It is Windows 11 just completely cut down to its bare essentials. And it could pretty much end up using up to less than two gigabytes of RAM just sitting idle on the desktop, which is just something that normal Windows cannot do. So we'll see if this cut down version actually makes some noticeable improvements in two problem games that I've had recently. But before we actually jump into the system itself, we'll just look at the level of performance that we were getting in Shadow Warrior 3 with just the stock version of Windows installed on it. As you'll notice throughout the entirety of the gaming experience here, the averages are pretty rock solid, but it's our 1% lows that are just an absolute disaster. And this is after letting DirectX 12 sit and load in the shaders and everything. So this is after actually playing through the level once, then reloading and going through it again after the shaders have all finished compiling. So this is already giving DirectX 12 its most ideal situation. And in general, the level of performance is just pretty much unusable. You could certainly get away with it, but it looks far worse and feels far worse than you would expect something running at 48 FPS average would feel like. And that's because of this constant feeling of stutter. And this carried over even when I actually ended up dropping the resolution all the way down to 720p and used FSR performance mode on top of that. So this is pretty much the most ideal situation for the system. We're running this game at such an ultra low resolution and the 1% lows were still suffering dramatically. And again, this was a, another complete restart of the level itself. So DirectX 12 shaders are already loaded in. The 1% lows were just kind of struggling throughout the whole experience, no matter what, even in the most ideal situation. Now, another game that was a problem game was Gears of War 4. As you can see here, we're running the game at the lowest possible game graphics settings, and I can't go past 720p. So this is the most ideal situation, and you'll see that the GPU is actually not even fully utilized. We are completely CPU limited at this point. Even at a full 30 watts, we're still getting some pretty noticeable performance issues as we're going through the level here. And this is already after multiple runs to make sure that all the DirectX 12 shaders are loaded in and that wasn't what was causing any problems here. So again, the most ideal situation and a uniquely different problem to what we saw with Shadow Warrior 3. It's why I chose these two games as the ones to mainly focus on because while in Shadow Warrior 3, the GPU was at almost 100% utilization throughout the whole experience, it's a completely different scenario here where our GPU is really not doing much and it all really falls down on the CPU. So I think it's the most ideal to try to use to test on a extremely light version of Windows that is essentially just designed to cut out all of the bloat. Now loading into Shadow Warrior 3, you can see here that at the 1080p resolution with FSR set to performance mode, we are still getting problems with the 1% lows. They aren't exactly hitting a very incredible range or anything like that, but it is a significant improvement over where we were at before where before we were at single digit numbers for our one percent lows we are at least now in the double digits but we're not hitting anywhere near above 20 let alone the 30 that we really need for this to feel like a truly smooth experience it's certainly far more playable and i can completely understand if somebody can justify playing the game like this because this is at least a massive improvement over where we were at before but it's still not the most ideal but it is at least a noticeable increase and it does improve the playability pretty significantly. So it's a minor win at the full 1080p resolution, but a still a win nonetheless. The real winning configuration here though is running the game at 720p with FSR on top of that. It's certainly not the most ideal setup if you actually plan on gaming like this, although it weirdly gives the game a very retro look that I'm almost really into. So it's not the worst possible outcome, especially since our 1% lows now are 
that at least a level where you can make a justification for playing the game like this. It's one of those things where we still had to aggressively lower graphics settings and resolution to get this to perform decently, but at least it does get to the point where it performs decently. While before with the full installation of Windows, our 1% lows were at a range where realistically most people would find it too difficult to really play comfortably. While now it's not exactly the most ideal experience, but it is something that you can actually get away with playing. And I think that that makes it a pretty significant win, at least in Shadow Warrior 3. But we'll take a look at Gears of War 4 to see if that change carries over to an extremely CPU limited game. And this one actually ended up being the most shocking to me by far. Gears of War 4 actually noticeably performed better. At no point did it have any of the major stutters or anything like that that I noticed while playing it with the full installation of Windows. This was an extremely, extremely smooth experience and you can tell by the fact that the 1% lows never really dip down past the high 20s. It's certainly not the most perfect experience. We would have ideally wanted the 1% lows to be somewhere above 30, but considering that our average is still really decent being in the low 40s, our 1% lows at the range that they are, it means we're not getting a crazy amount of fluctuation. It is a pretty consistent experience. And overall, I'm actually amazed. Installing Tiny 11 made a pretty meaningful difference in these two games where it took us from experiences where I would struggle to really recommend anyone from playing this into something where this actually was a really enjoyable and very smooth experience. I'm extremely impressed by this and I'm going to leave a link down below to Tiny11. If you're on a system with a Ryzen 5 5500U, I think in 2023 it is going to be the thing that might help you get some of these newer titles to perform at least at a level that is acceptable because this was actually a really, really significant change and overall i'm extremely happy with the results i think you're going to be blown away if you've been struggling to get some games to actually function maybe your one percent lows were at a range that was just not quite there for you this might be what you need and the best part is is that it is compatible with things like the game pass where a lot of the times these de-bloated versions of windows cut out so much that they actually destroy the functionality this is pretty much fully compatible with everything i have not run into any issues or anything just keep in mind though that this is a custom install of windows which means it comes down to how much you trust the developer of this to not do anything malicious now i have no reason to doubt this developer's ability or integrity so i felt more than comfortable installing this but if that is something that is of concern to you keep that in mind but overall this made such a huge improvement in these two games that from now on this is what i'm going to be using for testing and i'm going to recommend that you install this unless you guys really want me to go back to the full install of windows to get i guess more realistic performance numbers where a lot of people might end up hitting this improvement might just be substantial enough to be worth keeping so let me know down below what you think about that anyways i will catch you guys in the next one